Yo, what's going on, family? Welcome to another episode of the Tariq Elite Radio Show. And I'm your gracious host. My name is Mr. Tariq Elite Nasheed. Glad to have everybody tuning in. Now, today's show is brought to you by A Taste of Black Houston. That's an event that's happening on April 9th out in Houston where they take a charter bus all around different eateries around Black Houston. So you don't want to miss that. This is going to be happening on April 9th, that's Saturday. So all my Houston people, all my Texas people, you don't want to miss that. Go to visitblackhouston.com to get up on that event. Now today's show, we're going to do an emergency Mac lessons. I haven't talked about the ism in a minute. I haven't gotten into some thorough Mac lessons in a while. So we're going to get into some Mac lessons on today's show because it's a cold red pimps down situation that's been happening all this week with a lot of entertainers and athletes and all that. So we're going to get into that. The phone number is 818-850-5404. What I'm going to do is take a real quick commercial break, family, and we'll be right back after these messages on Tariq Radio. So don't go nowhere, everybody. What's up, family? You heard me talk about Ezekiel J. Walker's book, Black As I Want to Be, for the last couple of weeks. Well, actually, he's going to be in the SoCal area at the Shades of Africa bookstore in Long Beach on April 14th at 7.30 p.m. He's going to be screening his documentary film, The Madea Factory, and he's going to sign copies of his new book, Black As I Want to Be. So if you're in the area, go check him out. And again, that's April 14th, 730, Shades of Africa Bookstore in Long Beach. For more information, go to ZekeWrites.com. That's Z-E-K-E-W-R-I-T-E-S.com. Hey, what's up? It's dating and life coach Mr. Locario. Go to badboymembership.com and master the dating game by joining my Bad Boy Membership Program. In this program, you'll receive 45 through 90 minute, easy to follow, step-by-step dating advice tutorials that's guaranteed to help you attract, date, and have sex with beautiful women. Join the Bad Boy Membership today by going to badboymembership.com. That's badboymembership.com. Listen up, family. If you are a rapper, a singer, a music producer, or a label owner, then you should already know about LegendaryMix.com. That's your one stop for professional grade online mixing and mastering. Take advantage of their low cost, high quality mix downs and professional mastering right now. Clients rate them as the number one online mixing and mastering service on the net. With over 13 years of experience, you can expect top quality and a quick turnaround time. Visit Legendary Mix online today at LegendaryMix.com or call or text them at 347-565-5892 or email them at LegendaryMix1 at gmail.com. The most intense new video game app has now arrived. A medieval kingdom has been plagued with chaos and disorder. An evil force has dominated the land. And now it is up to the bravest knights to fight back the demonic forces and bring justice to the kingdom of the Moors. Play the newest, most exciting battle fight game app ever, Moorish Kingdom. Available at MoorishKingdom.com What's going on, family? Join me, Tariq Nasheed, live in Los Angeles for the first annual Plantation Celebration, a.k.a. the Coon Train Awards. It's going to be happening Saturday, April 9th at 7 p.m. at the Acme Comedy Theater on La Brea in Hollywood. Special celebrity guest judges will be on deck, and we're going to have a very special VIP meet and greet after the main event. Now, seating is limited for the Coon Train Awards, so you want to get your tickets early. Go to www.plantationcelebration.com. That's plantationcelebration.com. Finally, the lecture tour everyone has been waiting for. Join New York Times best-selling author and critically acclaimed producer of the Hidden Colors film series, Tariq Nasheed, live on the More Us Tour. Coming to Miami on Saturday, April 23rd at the Betty T. Ferguson Recreational Complex. Coming to New York City on Monday, April 25th at the Merkin Concert Hall. Coming to Dallas Friday, April 29th at the Hall of State Margaret in Al Hill, 
Auditorium, coming to Houston on Saturday, April 30th at the Shrine of the Black Madonna. This is one lecture tour you don't want to miss. For tickets, go to www.tariklive.com. That's www.tariklive.com. You are now tuning in to the King of Game, Tariq Elite on Tariq Elite Radio. All right, man, we are back. Woo! I had to put on some Mackin music on today's show, family. I got to keep the music nice and Mackish on today's show. We got to do an emergency Mac lessons on today's show, family. Shout out to everybody in the Ustream chat room. We're live on Ustream right now. Streaming, chopping up game. And speaking of streaming live, when we do the Coon Train Awards, which is next week, I think, April 9th, we're going to stream it on Ustream, and you can watch it at PlantationCelebration.com. We're going to have a good time. Y'all better get y'all tickets for that. It's going to be off the chain, especially all my SoCal people. But I, we got to chop up some game. I, a lot of people have been wanting me to chop up some ism. We haven't chopped up no real good ism in a minute, and this is the perfect time to chop up the ism family because... There's a lot of simping going on with a lot of public figures out here. There's a lot of what we call game goofy dudes out here. That's the topic of today's show. Game goofy dudes. And the thing is, family, get your notebooks and your, your pencils and your pads out because y'all y'all might want to take some notes on today's show. We're going to go old school Mac lessons on today's show, by the way. The thing is, man, when it comes to having your game tight, it don't matter if you are a celebrity, if you have a lot of money, none of that is a substitute for good game, meaning a sharp mind and a sharp mouthpiece. You can have a sharp mouthpiece but not have a sharp mind. So your mind has to be sharp and your mouthpiece has to be sharp. Your mind has to be sharp because you got to have that third eye of game that I've always talked about. You got to see things that's not being said. You got to see things that are supposed to be unseen. That's the player in you. Players can see with that third eye of game. And then once you see with that third eye of game, your crisp mouthpiece helps you articulate the things that your third eye can catch. Oh, we're getting deep on today's show, family. And like I said, family, having money and having fame and having notoriety is not a substitute for having a tight game and a tight mouthpiece. As a matter of fact, sometimes celebrity and money can stifle your third eye and your mouthpiece because now you don't have to utilize your mouthpiece as much and a lot of times you feel like you don't have to use that third eye because a lot of times your notoriety will get you women and the money will attract and notice I said attract not get attract attract certain people towards you And this is why we have a lot of athletes who have a lot of money and you have a lot of actors and entertainers who who might not have, may or may not have a lot of money, but they do have the notoriety, but they are still game goofy. They're goofy about the game. They are resting on their laurels. They're letting their notoriety, their fame or their money be the game foundation for them. And it doesn't work like that. Now, this week alone, there's a lot of situations going on with different athletes and entertainers. Now, for one, actor Columbus Short, who has married um, a young lady by the name of Kareen Steffens. Many people know her as Superhead. He had a little situation with his wife, Superhead. He wiped her up and she put him out the house and put him on blast on social media. I will get on that in a second. 
There's another situation that happened with a basketball player. Kyrie, what's Kyrie's last name? Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving was in a relationship with this chick who's a up and coming singer called Kaylani. I think that's how I'm pronouncing her name right. She got caught out there being a double dick clutcher with another dude. I will get on that a little bit later. And there's another situation, and all of this happened all of this week alone, by the way. This all happened in one week, this week alone. Another situation where basketball player D'Angelo Russell got caught snitching on another basketball player's teammate, Nick Young. Now, we got to get on that first. He got caught max snitching. And that's one thing that you don't do. That's a major violation of the rules. That's a major violation of guy code. That's a major violation of man code. And I, I don't even think I touched on max snitching before, but this is a great time to touch on it. All my young dudes out there, all the dudes coming up in the game, that's a major rule for players. Players never snitch on other players. You never put another dude's macking on Front Street. You never snitch on another man and his other breezies. You never put a man's macking out there on Front Street, especially so that his lady can get whiff of it. That's a major, major violation. See, the problem is, and let me explain what happened for those who don't know. Let me explain what happened. Two teammates, Nick Nick Young and D'Angelo, they were somewhere, I don't know where they were, they were somewhere chilling. They were just somewhere chilling, just chopping up game, just talking like two dudes do. And Nick Young, he was just talking about, you know, women or just whatever. He was just talking like players do. And this bitch nigga, D'Angelo Russell, was secretly taping him with his phone. And he was taping the conversation and Nick Young mentioned, you know, he, Nick Young is in a relationship with the white female rapper, Nikki, uh, not Nikki, Iggy Azalea. And I think Nick mentioned something about hollering at a couple of other females. He was talking about other females that he was kind of dealing with. I don't know the particulars. But this bitch nigga, D'Angelo Russell, and that's what he is, to sit up there having a conversation with another man and you low-key taping it, is perhaps one of the most bitchified things that a man could do. That's one of the most bitchified things a man could do. Sit up here chopping up game with another dude and you low-key taping him, and then you make the tape of you chopping up game with this dude public when he's talking about some of his little side breezies. This is what single motherhood has created. A lot of these single mothers have, you know, they've created, and I'm not trying to put the blame on all women, but just the situation of having a bunch of single mothers, you make a bunch of bitch made dudes, which creates a fuckboy revolution. There's so many fuckboys out here. Dudes don't even know that fuckboyism is bad. See, the thing is, listen to me, when, when men talk to each other, the purpose of two men talking to each other is to exchange game, either to learn or to teach. And when you're teaching somebody some game and they're elevating, you can learn from their elevation. So the whole purpose of two men chopping it up with each other is to share game and to learn game. That's the only purpose that men have for chopping it up with each other. Even if, if you're hanging out with your homies, y'all so y'all supposed to be chopping up some game, learning some shit. Niggas ain't supposed to be sitting around gossiping, doing non-constructive shit. That's how dudes get caught up in bullshit. The reason why a lot of men get caught up in dumb shit is because nobody's sitting around exchanging game. Nobody's chopping up no game. Niggas sitting around doing idle dumb shit or talking about non sequiturs or non important things, nothing to do with game. So if you ain't chopping up no real game with other dudes, some dumb shit is gonna seep in. 
It's like, hey, let's smoke this blunt. And while we smoking this blunt or while we drinking, while we getting high, let's go steal something. Let's go run a train on a hood rat so this hood rat can snitch on us later. Just dumb shit. So men, when you get together with other dudes, you're supposed to be chopping up game. Y'all supposed to be learning something, building something. You're supposed to be taking some game away from the conversation. So my man Nick and this dude D'Angelo, they sitting up here chopping up game like dudes do. And a lot of times when dudes are confiding, which is what Nick was doing, sometimes players confide with each other about their little side breezies or their relationships in a way, in an effort to kind of get some feedback and some game on what they need to do, whether it be right or wrong. Sometimes dudes just need to chop it up with each other so that uh, they can figure out the best move for them. So for a dude to sit up and tape a conversation of two cats just chopping it up on some player shit and then go put it out publicly, that's hoe-ass shit. That's a major man code violation. You're supposed to get your ass whooped doing shit like that. Because back in the day, even when I was a teen, when, when dudes would put your game out there or snitch on you, you never post the max snitch. You snitch, a dude snitch on you, tell one of your breezies about the other breezy. That's grounds for an ass whooping. And I talked about this before. There was a situation when I was around 15 years old. I had my squad, my the homies that, that would kick it. And I had me a, a little team of breezies in high school. You know, because I'm a young dude trying to figure it out. So when you're trying to figure it out, sometimes you utilize your options until you figure out the right thing to do. So I had a, a little squad of breezies. And I kept noticing that my, my, my little girlfriends kept finding out about each other. I'm like, God damn, how are my breezies finding out about each other and put me on blast? There's a crack in my game. I'm like, okay, what am I doing wrong? So now this is a lesson for me to figure out what am I doing? What am I saying? How am I slipping? How are my little breezies finding out about each other? Now come to find out, one of the, the cats who was hanging with us, this nigga named DJ, little fat fucker. I, I, I'm, I'm memorizing this nigga now. He's a little f short fat nigga, always skinning and grinning. He would hang around the squad and he was more of an associate. You know what I'm saying? He was more of one of those niggas, not part of the main squad, but one of these niggas who just kind of came around skinning and grinning and laughing. And come to find out that it was this nigga going to my little girlfriends telling them about each other like hey Tariq is Tariq dating this girl who go to that school over there you know he was doing little sucker shit like that because one of my breezies told me that's how down I had one of my main breezes she was that down she knew because of this bitch nigga was telling about my other chicks but she was still down enough to say hey look you don't need to be around this guy because he's telling your business so she was a down ass chick for doing that and she put me up on game and let me know that this nigga was putting my business out like that. And I caught him because she, he somehow got her number and he would call her and tell her everything that I did. Just being a bitch nigga. And she called me on three-way one time with him doing it. He's like, yeah, I, I'm listening to this nigga just tell all of my player business. Yeah, Tariq, be out. he be going with this girl and they be hooking up and yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, that's his girlfriend. He got another girlfriend over there. Her name's... And I'm, I'm all... Okay. Okay, so I verified that this nigga was snitching on me. So we caught that nigga slipping. We brought him over to the house and we lit into his fat ass. And that's how you would handle bitch niggas like that back in the day. When niggas put your, your game out there, they're snitching on you. That was the ground... That was grounds for, for you to step to him. You don't hang around other dudes and max snitch. 
And the game has gotten real twisted now with a lot of these athletes out here because these athletes are put out in forefront in the forefront of being role models, especially for black males. And they engage in some of the most simplest behavior, the most unplayeristic behavior, no code of game at all. Look at that situation with Derek Fisher and Matt Barnes. Derek Fisher was messing with Matt Barnes' leftover chick. That's a violation of the game right there. And Matt Barnes and Derek Fisher were about to go at it and go to blows over this this chick. What part of the game is that? That's another rule. You don't mess with the homies' leftovers. You don't cupcake with the homies' leftovers. That's the thing. I think Derek Fisher was over there trying to cupcake with the leftovers. You don't cupcake with the leftovers. See, the thing is, with this D'Angelo Russell dude, because he has that effeminized mentality, because that's what women do. Women can sit around and put people's sex lives on blast and, girl, I heard your man was at the club, girl. That's woman shit. They could do that. Men ain't supposed to be doing no shit like that. Dry snitching on other niggas, telling no niggas dicks. Even if it's your enemy. You don't put a nigga's Mac in business out there like that. That's just a major violation of a man code. But see, black people, the thing is with black folks, a lot of black people got a slave gene in them. And being a slave or slave-minded person, it's almost imperative that you snitch. You just have to snitch and put another black person on blast. That's something that's in Negro culture telling on somebody, especially if the so-called victim is white. Now, Nick Young is dating a white chick, Iggy Azalea. And I guess the slave gene in D'Angelo Russell had to snitch for the sake of the missus. Oh, Lord, Nick is cheating on the missus. Oh, I got to tell her, Lord. Oh, I got to let them know, Lord. Oh, don't you be cheating on missy now. Oh, Lord. Hey! Oh, don't be cheating on the missus. This slave coon nigga went to tell him for no reason. So that's another thing, especially with black folks. Cut that put on blast shit out. We got this thing where we want to put people on blast. Cut that shit out and be mackish about yours. Because people like Superhead do that. Y'all niggas act like Superhead. We don't need a bunch of male Superheads putting people on blast. Because that's what Superhead is known for. Sucking dicks and telling. Which is very strange that dudes are still wiping this chick up. I've done several shows about that young lady. I'm not even mad at her at this point. I'm so not mad at her. I actually popped my collar to her because she's told people what type of chick she is. Everybody knows the kind of female she is. She will suck you and then put you on blast. That's her MO. That's her claim to fame. Sucking and fucking and telling. And dudes still close their third eye of game and ignore that and still wipe this chick up like they're going to flip a hoe into a housewife. And I've talked about this on my old Mac Lesson shows, family. There's three types of hoes players don't get with because I'm not even knocking hoes. I'm not knocking anybody for being a hoe. There's some good hoes out there. I don't knock you for being a hoe. But there are three types of hoes you don't deal with. I don't give a damn how good the dome is or nothing, none of that stuff. There's three types of hoes you don't get in relationships with. Let me say that because you can smash any hoe. You can just smash and then bounce. But if you're trying to get into a situation, even if it's a square situation, a situation involving some ism, a situation where you're trying to put some pimping down, even with some pimping, you don't mess with certain hoes. The three types, and I've talked about this many times, the first type of hoe, you don't mess with is an underage hoe. You got an underage chick doing whatever, take her ass to a shelter, a runaway home, but don't you mess with her under no circumstances. 
I don't give a damn what type of freaky shit she does. You don't fuck with no underage hoe. No underage chick who's doing something hoish. That's what I mean. She's not hoish because she's underage. I'm talking about an underage chick who's doing something hoish. Don't mess with her. Don't give a damn what she's doing. Under no circumstances. The second type of hoe you never mess with is a drug addict hoe. Any hoe that's on that narcotic, don't mess with her like that. Don't get into a situation like that. She will get you twisted. And the third type of hoe you do not deal with is a snitch. Do not deal with a hoe who's a snitch because they will tell on you eventually. That's the rule. And this rule never wavers. And that happens over and over again with this superhead chick. All these niggas she gets with, Eddie Winslow, Bobby Brown, all of these dudes get with this chick and ignore the rules and she does the same shit over and over. With Bobby Brown, she was filming this nigga while he was asleep on her sofa. Eddie Winslow, she was dating him, put his shit on blast. Now Columbus Short, she didn't put this nigga on blast. They were married and she said he cheated on her. So she put him out and see, they're in the lobby of their condo or apartment or whatever with all of his clothes thrown out in the middle of the floor and he's sitting around with a backpack and a hoodie on charging his phone looking like a homeless karate expert or some shit. So this is the kind of chick, the minute things go bad, she go back to her, she go back to her old hoe ways, which is telling. And dumb niggas are so game goofy, they keep signing up for that. See, the thing is, if you're with a person, and shit goes bad. Both of y'all are supposed to keep your mouth shut. The minute things go bad, and I think Columbus Short and Superhead, they've only been married for a short period of time. I know this woman got good dome, but that don't mean that you close your third eye of game. You can't be manipulated by good dome. You can't let the hoe turn you out. You turn the hoe out. Damn. Y'all niggas are so game goofy, y'all letting chicks turn you out with dome. And niggas are looking stupid now. But the thing is, when you date somebody, you're in a relationship or a marriage with somebody and shit goes bad. Marriage is a business. In order to keep the business tight, you don't go out there running your goddamn mouth. White people understand that. You don't see white people putting each other on blast like that. Even when motherfuckers cheating and all that. Nah. You don't do that. Look at Donald Sterling and his wife. Now, these people are billionaires sitting on billions of dollars. Now, Donald Sterling got, you know, a little black pussy he's cupcaking with with his little racist ass. His wife knows the game. And when shit goes left, she's holding it down still. She ain't about to let that money get fucked up. So she's holding it down. They weren't about to let that Vistiviano chick mess up the game for their family and their money. Because understand, the marriage is still a business. You can't let all that emotional shit get out there. Like with this superhead chick, she's putting his business out. Oh, yeah, he homeless, he broke, he ain't got no money. Okay. This nigga shit. So this is why family dudes, and women too, but, but especially dudes, you got to choose correctly. Because even if you make a mistake in the game, you don't want nobody out here compounding your mistake by putting all your shit out there on front street. Because that's not going to help anything. So you can't be game goofy out here dealing with these women. I, I, I take my hat off to people like Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx was the one of the only celebrity dudes that I know of who turned down Superhead. He met her, took her to the crib. He was about to smash. And then he found out who she was and he put his clothes back on and was like, oh, hell no. He was smart enough to use his third eye of game because he knew that he was be he would be put on blast in one of her books and he didn't want to go out like that, which was smart. And the thing is, you know, people like Superhead and, and, and people like Amber Rose and all these people, they talk about slut shaming. And that's another thing. A lot of 
black females are getting on that whole slut shaming rhetoric where they want to complain that people criticize them for being sluts and their whole thing is well we should be able to sleep with whoever we want to sleep with without being shamed it ain't about slut shaming it's about deceit shaming because a lot of times these women are very deceptive with how they get down just like superhead nobody's sh shaming her for being a slut People are shaming her for the deceit because a lot of these dudes she was sleeping with and laying up with and sucking off, she didn't tell them that she was going to put all their business in a book. So it was the deception that people looked down on. Just like with this situation with Kelani and Kyrie Irving. Because people are using the whole slut shaming nonsense with this situation and again we pick up little bullshit from the dominant society whenever they say something they throw at us we grab it and run with it so a lot of black people will use slut shaming as a justification to go out here and double clutch dicks they're like oh don't slut shame me now i want to suck and fuck who i want to fuck I don't slut shame me now i want to do what i want to do i want to lay up with who i want to lay up with and you cannot slut shame me but the thing is understand this People in the dominant white society, they could, they can sacrifice having a few sluts sprinkled here and there. They can sacrifice that because they have a stronger, healthy community. Other communities are stronger and healthy. We've already been damaged by systematic white supremacy, so we don't need to compound that with other dysfunctions. Y'all running around trying to justify being a damn slut. I mean in black society they've always looked at us like that so that ain't nothing new we don't need dysfunctions to latch on to because my thing is whatever you do always have an economic base around what you're doing because my thing if you're going to be a hoe get some money out your hoeing see running around being a slut just sucking and, and licking just to be doing it there's a shame in that because you ain't getting no money. You're just doing shit just to be doing it because people in the dominant society said that it's cool to do it. Stop getting your cues from people in the dominant society because they don't give us anything that's going to elevate us to empowerment. So if you're going to be in the game, be about your money, not just to have a dick in your damn face. And for those who don't know about the Kyrie Irving and the Kalani situation, Kalani, however you pronounce her name. Now, Kyrie Irving, he's a basketball player. This dude is worth $90 million. I think he signed a $90 million contract, if I'm not mistaken. And he's he was in a relationship with this chick, Kalani. And Kalani's ex-dude, she was dating this dude named Party Next Door. He signed to Drake's record label, I think. And this dude, the party next door dude, took a picture the other day and put it on his Instagram of him in bed with this chick, with the Kyrie chick. He had, he low-key took a picture of her hand because her hand has very distinct tattoos. He took a picture of her hand. I don't think she know he did it. But he took a picture of her hand and put it on Instagram to let everybody know he's rocking with that again. And then all hell broke loose. She got caught out there by her side nigga. He put her on out there. And people started going in on her like, how you got a man and you laying up here with the side nigga and the side nigga then put you out on blast. So people were going in on her. And people were low-key going in on Kyrie for not checking his chick and not having his chick in check. And that's the thing. A lot of times when dudes creep around with a few breezies, the woman is not really looked down upon. You still look at the woman like, okay, she was victimized by that. But when a woman is out here creeping on a dude, not only is the woman looked at funny, the dude is often looked at as funny style because people look at a dude for leadership. And they look at a dude to be the kind of person to you, you're supposed to handle business you're supposed to be a leader you're supposed to be a boss you're supposed to be the head of your household 
if you don't have your household in check, that means something's wrong with your ism, your game. People just immediately think that. So it's important to have your game tight, especially when you're in a situation with a young lady and she's out here creeping with the next nigga. Because see, a woman can't have two niggas in her ear. A woman can't get game from two dudes. She can't maintain two dudes. You can't be in a relationship with two dudes because psychologically women ain't built for that. It confuses women. You can't try to maintain two dudes. Women get fucked up in the game doing that. Now you do have women out here who try to play that I'm I can do what a man can do and I can have a whole I can juggle niggas. I can have a whole bunch of niggas. You got a lot of women like that living in the fucking projects. That's what you have living on Section 8. That's what you have living in the hood. A bunch of women who can juggle niggas. And that's why their asses are usually in the hood. Bummy and broke. A bottom feeder. Because the kind of dudes that are get down with that, or the kind of dudes that they could attract with that mentality, are usually dusty niggas. And water seeps its own level. Hood rats deal with dusty niggas. But this Kyrie chick, this Kailani chick, I'm sorry, the Kailani chick, and, and that's another thing. I've told dudes about these women with these tattoos, family. I've always talked about women with a bunch of tattoos. When you have women with a bunch of tattoos, you often have to suspect that she might be a hoe. Now, I've said this and a lot of people have gotten mad. I've, wrote, I've written about this in my first book, The Art of Mackin, which y'all need to get, by the way. Everybody needs to go to Amazon or BarnesandNobles.com and get The Art of Mackin and my book, The Elite Way. But the thing is, I've talked about women with tattoos. Usually women with a bunch of tattoos are usually more hoish than the ones who don't have them. Now, that isn't to say that all women who have tattoos are hoes. I know all of you are not. There are women out here who have a bunch of tattoos and they are not hoish. Because a lot of women will try to email me. Treek, I got tattoos. I ain't no hoe. Okay, well, good for you. But the general consensus is women with a bunch of tattoos usually engage in more promiscuous behavior. And there are scientific studies on this. This is not me yanking some out my ass. This is from experience and scientific studies. That's why you go to a strip club, you see strippers be having a gang of tattoos and be busting it wide open. That's why they call certain tattoos on a woman's back a tramp stamp. So when you got women with just gratuitous tattoos all over their body, you're going to have to suspect that there might be some hoeing going on or hoish or sluttish behavior going on unless proven otherwise. There's going to be some double dick clutching unless proven otherwise. And this Kehlani chick has tattoos all over the place, all on her hands. And turns out she's a little double dick clutcher. She's clutching double dicks. Now, what's interesting about this, you got to understand relationships are businesses, like I said. And when you get date somebody or marry somebody, that person is your business partner. That's how you got to look at relationships and dating. If you're dating seriously, that person is your business partner. And my man, Kyrie, if you sitting on 90 million of them things, you got to have a better business partner than a chick with a gang of fucking tattoos. Unless you got into the game with that person. See, I can excuse certain things. If you were in a relationship with somebody, y'all were on some hood shit. And she's a ride or die chick and she rode with you to prominence and you guys built together and she rode with you along the way and then you got successful and she stayed with you. That's fine. That's fine. But I'm talking about if you, you, you've established yourself economically and now you're choosing people to get into relationships with and you get into a relationship, which is a business with a chick with a gang of fucking tattoos. Is that the right business partner to have? Because y'all got relationships and dating and marriage twisted. Marriage and dating is a business. That person is your business partner. Can they help you maintain your economic business? 
Can they help you maintain your empire? Can they help you maintain a family with all them goddamn tattoos? Because usually the tattoos are a symptom of something else. And I ain't knocking tattoos now. I'm not knocking tattoos, but usually there's some other shit going on with women with these tattoos and there's some shit going on with that Kehlani chick. Because she's one of these mixed chicks who kind of grew up probably confused racially the tragic mulatto so there's a lot of psychological shit going on there that a dude who has 90 million of them things don't even need to be dealing with you don't need to be somebody's goddamn psychologist when you're sitting on all that paper you need somebody who's stable and the thing is you dating this chick she got caught out there being a double dick clutcher and she did what a lot of the double dick clutches do. She immediately went into victim mode. You know, this Kehlani chick, after she got caught, she she went on this little suicide watch thing. She started taking pictures from the hospital talking about she tried to commit suicide and, and people are clowning. Even Chris Brown started clowning her. She then took pictures of, and she's at the hospital. She took a picture of her arm in the hospital bed like, get the fuck out of here. I talked about that before on my show. I was dating a chick. She got caught doing something slick. Then all of a sudden, they start acting like they sick. She start coughing and throwing up. <coughs> I'm sick. <coughs> Don't leave me. I'm getting sick. <coughs> that's a that's an old hoe tactic, too. They get caught with a hoe, and then all of a sudden, they get a terminal illness. They're in the hospital. Oh, I'm on suicide watch. Oh, Oh no, Kyrie. I'm sick. I got lung cancer. <coughs> don't leave me. Oh, everybody, don't be mad. I'm, I'm depressed. <coughs> I want to take my life. <coughs> Stop it. Them old hoe tactics. He get the whole flu. <laughs> she get homonia. Not pneumonia. She get homonia. Oh, I got caught cheating. <coughs> oh, my titty got a cyst in it. <coughs> okay, your titty got a dick on it. Let's just stop with the homonia. Don't fall for that. They try to garner sympathy. Don't fall for that. I ain't falling for no, no bit of it. She wasn't suicidal when that dick was in her hand. She did, if she was suicidal, she would have took pills. The only thing she was dipping in her mouth were balls. She was overdosing on dick. She wasn't trying to hang herself with a rope. She was hanging herself with a dick in her throat. Oh, my ovaries hurt. Uh, I need a hysterectomy. No, you got a dick directomy. Stop with the hoe sicknesses. I, they kill me with the hoe. Fellas, and y'all stop falling for the hoe sicknesses. The hoe flu. <laughs> she has dicker cell. Not sicker cell. She has dicker cell leukemia. Don't fall for the dicker cell thing. She's, they get caught hoeing and now they sick. Nah. Don't fall for that because then dudes start, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to forgive you. Thank you. No, don't fall for the dicker cell. Don't fall for that. The hoes always get sick when they get caught. But th th this is another thing, too. Let me talk to, to, to the chick. Because, Kaylani, let me drop some game on you. Because I don't give a shit what happened to you in life or whatever. You charge that bullshit to the game. Because you might have had a difficult childhood being a mixed chick going, growing up. No, I don't know what happened to you. You got all those crazy tattoos, but whatever. But the universe, sometimes the universe gives people a lifeline. The universe gave this chick a motherfucker who's sitting on 90 million of them things. That's a come up right there. Sometimes people are so used to losing in life when they actually get a win and they come up, they don't know how to handle that come up. You got women out here who would die to meet a motherfucker to be in a relationship with a nigga sitting on 90 million of them things. All you got to do is just kind of kick it. You, this is a... 
you're a SoundCloud artist. I don't even think she has any shit that's out out yet. She's running around here like she got platinum albums. You ain't Beyonce, bitch. You ain't Rihanna, bitch. You better play your position. You ain't there yet. You better keep them other dicks out your hand until you get a platinum plaque. At least sit your ass down and just chill out with that dude with the 90 goddamn million and play your role and be that good wifey role and kind of dodge them damn dicks if you can. You can't discipline yourself enough to dodge them dicks and you got 90 million sitting over here that's waiting on you with your name on it. That's how game goofy you are. We got a lot of game goofy women out here too. You winning. You sitting here with all that paper with your name on it and you out here fucking around with a nigga who's on some fuckboy shit. The nigga was a fuckboy for putting you on blast, by the way. Because you shouldn't be snitching on chicks either, fellas. And that's another thing. Niggas shouldn't be out here snitching on women. If you creeping, don't snitch on them. So your dumb ass got caught out by your fuckboy side nigga. Dummy. So now you got the whole flu. Now you got caught out there. Now you got caught out there. You got muscular dystrophy. <laughs> now you got caught out there. Now you want to play the sick role. No, don't be sick now. She's sick because she fucked that money up. You're going to have to discipline yourself, family. Stop doing that dumb shit. Stop being game goofy when you winning. Just like y'all remember Paula Abdul a few years ago. Paula Abdul, who used to be on American Idol. And, you know, Paula Abdul had a big singing career in the, the late 80s, early 90s. Paula Abdul, when she was on American Idol, she was having a low-key affair with one of the contestants. It was a young dude that Paula was giving that little middle-aged pussy to. Now, Paula was sitting on some nice little paper. Paula had a nice little chunk of change. She should, Paula was sitting on a few million of, uh, dollars. So Paula was doing pretty good. So, and she's crazy as cat shit. So she was low-key fucking with one of those dudes. What was that dude's name? My people in the chat room, tell me dude's name. What was dude's name she was messing with? Somebody in the chat room said she had whole polio. <laughs> Say, Kaylani had whole polio. <laughs> I like that. That's Trail said that. That's funny. But what was that dude who was messing with Paula Abdul? That goofy little bitch nigga. He's a little mixed dude. What Ryan Seacrest nigga? People just naming. <laughs> Shut up, nigga. Somebody naming Ryan Seacrest. Somebody in the chat room got to give me the dude's name. Is it Corey? Corey something? I want to get his name right so y'all can look it up. He's a light-skinned dude, a light-skinned, curly head dude. A lot of folks forgot about that situation. Was it Corey Clark? Some shit like that. Somebody in the chat room is going to help me. So they're Googling right now. Somebody, nigga said Jesse Jackson. Nigga, shut up and kill yourself. I think it was Corey Clark. It wasn't, okay. I think it was Corey Clark, I think. But the thing is, yeah, it was Corey Clark. Corey Clark. So he was a contestant on American Idol. So he's trying to be a singer and all this. And a little mixed dude, you know, a little mixed dude with a little afro curly hair and all that shit. So Paula, she, you know, because there was a big scandal because you're not supposed to be fucking with the, the, um, the contestants as a judge. You know, that was a conflict of interest. But this dude, he was low key messing with Paula Abdul. She would, she slid him the number, had him come up to her mansion, and he was smashing. So instead of keeping that shit real mackish. This was a perfect situation for this dude to keep this thing mackish as hell. That dude could have parlayed that into a whole bunch of shit. But because he was a fuck boy who was game goofy, didn't have no ism, this dude did what a chick would do and went out and started telling. He put Paula on blast. This nigga went out, yeah, Paula Abdul having sex with me. Yeah, she brought me to the house. I got receipts. I got the phone number, got the address, and I'm trying to promote my new album. 
So this nigga was trying to attention whore to get his bullshit ass career off the ground. That never happened. This nigga fell off and he's broke now. This nigga gambled like a bitch and now he's broke. That nigga could have parlayed the hell out of that. That nigga could have parlayed that. This nigga was banging a millionaire chick. My players out here. If you single and you got a millionaire chick who still looks good. Paula looks good still. She ain't like no decrepit looking chick. She's a good looking chick giving up some of that rich middle aged cooch. Nigga, you parlay that and flip that and pull out your pimp boots and get some of that paper in your pocket, nigga. Now, if I'm single, if I'm single, and this is very hypothetical because I'm in a wonderful marriage with my beautiful wife but i'm saying hypothetically if i'm single and paula dude shows up on me and you sitting on millions you chose up on the right one paula because you're gonna break all types of bread and i ain't telling shit i'll show you how to get down and keep that shit on the low every time she see me i'll be paula i need to hold some baby and i'll be playing her old ass straight up now tell me album while i'm hitting it and counting that paper and I ain't gonna tell nothing. I ain't gonna put you on blast. We're gonna keep it real breezy around here. But this bitch ass nigga's trying to get his little career off the ground. And again, one of these dudes probably raised by a chick. He knows how to do things like a woman. Woman shit don't work for a man. That's why you gotta have some game about yourself. And I respect anybody who knows some good game. That's why my idol is this white gigolo named Helge Sarby. I used to talk about him on my show all the time. Is this Swiss gigolo, the white dude. Because I, well, I talk a lot about white supremacy, but I give a white person props where props is due. I give you your props. And one of my idols, my Mackin idols, is a Swiss gigolo named Helge Sarby. Now, Helge went to prison for like six years because he got greedy with his game. But my nigga's game was so damn cold. This was a white gigolo. He was from Switzerland. And this dude would mack up billionaire women. The dude would get these billionaire women to break bread. He, and, and a lot of times these women were married. So he would get into relationships with them and just spit that ism at him. And these women would break this dude off millions. He was messing with the heir to BMW, the chick who owns BMW, the car company, and that's worth like $12 billion. And she, the chick is married. He was fucking with her on the side. That was his chick. She was having an affair on her husband, and this nigga macked her up, and she was breaking this nigga off millions. She was like, yeah, he, you know, yeah, I gave, the first time I gave him 7 million euros because I cared for him. I mean, he was spitting. The problem is he was getting so much paper. He got power hungry. He got a little greedy. My nigga got a little greedy. He was like, what? That 7 million ain't enough. I'm gonna need about 40 million. Then he started low key threatening him like, okay, look, if you don't give me that 40 million, I'm gonna go put our relationship on blast. Then that became embezzlement. Then that became a crime. Then that became blackmail. So you can't do that. That's why you got to keep your game a little bit tighter. See, my man got a little power hungry. My man got a little power hungry, and that was the problem. You can't get power hungry in the game. If you just say, hey, I need about five, six million, and they give it to you, ain't nobody, that's somebody just breaking bread. But when you say, if you don't give it to me, I'm going to do this, then that become, it, it becomes blackmail and embezzlement, and that's a crime. So you don't have to commit a crime. Just keep your mouthpiece, Chris. You don't get greedy and keep that thing real pimping. Anyway, y'all, that's been today's episode of the Tariq Elite Radio Show. Hope everybody learned some good game, learned some ism from today's show. Don't forget to join me live on Ustream this Sunday. Go get your tickets to join me for the Coon Train Awards. And also, you can vote on who you think should be nominated at plantationcelebration.com plantationcelebration.com and also get tickets to join me live the more rust tour is coming april 23rd go to tariklive.com i'll be in miami new york dallas and houston we're gonna have a ball on tour i'm gonna holla y'all have a good one